So here in the report form, you can see the contents of the form here. We have the introduction section, then we have orifice comparison inserts, venturi insert, and the square insert. And at the end, you will have some references. And each, each section has a couple of steps in them. So it's a good way to see the contents and jump between questions if you need. And then we have some files. Right now, you don't have uh, many files, just a sample data that is provided by default. So in the, let's close this. So in the beginning, you have info, uh, student information that you should put in your uh, name and student ID. Then we have the introduction videos. And right here, we have this first uh, code cell that you need to run. So let's do it. And this form, uh, uh, this cell is just uh, bringing over some code that we need for our PIB analysis and also installing the Jerry software on the system. Uh, we use Jerry software to do the CFD simulations. So uh, for each form in the laboratory, uh, laboratory report, you can just double click on the form to see the code that is running behind the form. So here I'm connecting. I'm connecting to a GitHub repository to get to get the PIV uh, to get the PIV code. And here I'm installing Jerry's. So I provided some uh, comments on the codes so that you can follow and see what's going on in the code if you want. But that's not necessary. So it's finished and. We have all the things needed to go ahead with the form. So now if we look at the files, we can see that the sample data is gone. And we have the open PIV, which is the code needed to run PIV simulations. And we have also a folder called flow visualization lab. And in the lab, we have uh, Jerry's files, we have the images. So all of our PIV images are stored here for different orifice squares, uh, square insert and the Venturi. And there is a flow theory folder that I will put some PDF files that explain the theory behind uh, PIV and CFD further. If you want, you can take a look at those. And that's it. So these are the files. Let's go ahead with the first question. So, so the first question asks you to sketch a diagram from the flow. You just need to uh, sketch it on a piece of paper, and then you take a picture of it and import it here, just like we did uh, with the previous notebook. Just make sure that the picture is not too, too large. If it's more than two megabytes, uh, please bring it down with uh, Windows Paint or some other program and then upload it here. So the, the second question asks you to run some PIV uh, analysis. So here we can select uh, the region that we want to run the analysis on. Let's, for example, select the flat orifice as an example. You should enter the window size, let's say 64. Uh, you should enter the overlap between each window size. So let's say 32 and the search area. Search area can be equal to window size or slightly larger. So let's input 80. And then we have a scale parameter. This is scale parameter is to uh, for the computer to know how many pixels equals a millimeter. So it should have a, a scale factor, factor to change uh, pixels into millimeters. So for that, we need to go look at our PIV images. So I, I selected the flat plate orifice. So I can go to the images folder, the flat orifice, and in that, Folder, I have all the images that we are going to analyze. 
and we have also an image called calibration. If you take a look at this image, you can see you can see that this image shows the the calibration. So we know that the throat area is 12.5 uh, millimeters. And here it is shown that this area is, is 288 pixels. So for, for the scale, we can do 288 divided by 12.5 millimeters. So the scale should be 23.04. So 23.04 pixels per millimeter, right? Then we have the background removal on and also bad vector replacement on. So let's run the code. And immediately it starts the process. Right now it's finding the background image. So it's done finding the background image for image set A, then it will do the set B. So the background was found and right now it's finding the reflections. We, we need to remove the background of the images and also the, the reflections so that we have a good clear pictures of the moving particles. So now, that's done, and now the main process has begun. So right now it's processing the images. Depending on the parameters that you choose for window size and overlap and also the search area, this can take longer or shorter. But good values can be 64, 80, 32, whatever you want. But don't, don't go lower than, let's say, 20 for a window size. Otherwise, it's going to take a long time. So the, the process has finished. And the program is going to show us the, the results in a second. So these are the results. Now here I have a, a button analysis folder. If you push this button, you are then taken to, to the analysis folder. Here we have all the results from our analysis. For example, if we take a, a look at the first one. So the first one is for time zero. We can see that at time zero, we have this, this column is X, this column is Y, then we have U, V, and the signal to noise ratio. So yeah, these are the X and Y positions and U and V velocities for time zero. Then we have also a GIF that will show you the results in, a, in an animation. This will take a while for Google Colab to show it. It's 10 megapixel, 10 megabytes. Okay, I will I will reduce the size of the GIF so that uh, it's gonna be faster for you. Yeah, I will definitely reduce the size of the GIF so that it's, it's going to be faster. Okay, so we can see the results. The flow is moving upwards and we see the velocity vectors changing with time. And the dimensions are, of course, in millimeters. So. This is a GIF. And then for a better understanding of the flow, you can choose different times here with this slider. And uh, you can see the results for that time uh, with this plot. So the cool thing is that all these vectors are labeled. So if you 
move your mouse over one of them, you can see underneath the, the plot here, you can see the UX and UY uh, velocities for each vector. And also you can zoom in on the image to see, so let's, you can also zoom in on the image to see uh, different regions. For example, here we have a circulation flow and you can pan around, of course, and you can zoom back. Okay, underneath this plot, uh, you have a cell that gives you the velocity plot versus the time. For example, in the question, we ask about the, the velocity at the throat. So the throat is around 16 millimeter and let's say 10. So for X position of 60, 16 and Y position of 10, we can run this cell. And this will give us the, the velocity versus time diagrams. So you can see that the UY velocity fluctuates around 300 millimeter per second at that point, and UX velocity is around zero, which if you take a look at the plot, you can see that we, we don't have any velocity in the X direction, but we have a large velocity in, in, in the Y direction. So you can see that the velocity is around 300 uh, millimeters per second at that point that, that we inputted. Let's also do some CFD simulations. For CFD simulations, you, you need to provide a simulation time. So let's say that we want to simulate five seconds. Then we have to input the mesh refinement, let's say six. So the mesh refinement uh, shows how small the mesh is gonna be. For example, if we say six, then uh, the x direction would be divided to 2 to the power of 6 region. So it would be 64 regions. And also the y direction would be uh, divided into 64 regions. So that would make 64 multiplied by 64, 4,000 uh, small regions in the whole uh, flow field. And then the input, uh, the inlet velocity, which is in millimeter per second, let's say 120. Output start time, let's say one. We want to see the output from one second to five seconds. And then time step can be 0.2 for the output. The, <clears throat> the internal time, uh, time step for the simulation itself is, uh, is calculated by, soft, by the software itself. This is just the time step for the outputs. So let's run the CFD simulations. The simulation starts at uh, time zero and then goes to the next time step. And since we inputted a mesh refinement of six, this will take a longer time. So Mesh refinement, uh, a good number for mesh refinement would be four, five, or six. If you go higher than six, then uh, you will have to wait for a long time. But five or six is a good value for mesh refinement. So let's wait for the program to do the, the simulation and we will come back to it when it's done. So the simulation is finished, it's all done. And uh, don't worry about this, uh, this error, it's not an error, it's completely normal. And the, uh, the simulation is finished, it took around three minutes, so be patient when you run simulations. And we can see the results here. So again, the velocity vectors are all labeled, so we can hover over them to see uh, the, 
the velocity vectors. You can see them here. If I hover over any of them, you can see their values. And the background color shows the pressure. The background color shows the pressure field. So for example, here we have high velocity because of the geometry <coughs> and low pressure. So just like before, we have the time slider. So we can look at the, these results at different times. And also if we push this analysis folder, we can, we, we can see the, the results from our CFD analysis. If we take a look at the time, the first time, we can see that these are the X values, Y values, U, V, and P. So for each time output, we have U and V and also the pressure for each uh, time location uh, position. And we also have a GIF that shows a, an animation of the output of the results. Again, this may take a while, so be patient. Four megabytes, so it's not too bad. Okay, you can see the animation, so the pressure is changing. And also the velocity is changing, but you cannot see it because it's too small. Yeah, so these are all the results and just like before, you have this code cell that, that plots the velocity versus time. For example, let's look at the velocity at the, let's look at the velocity at zero and minus 10, let's say. So at X position of zero and Y position of minus 10, we can plot the velocity and the velocity is around 390, I guess. 219. Yeah, around 219. And it changes with time. So, yeah. We have both UX velocity and UY velocity. So you just go ahead and complete the lab running the, the cells to get the answers. It should be easy. One quick thing that I forgot to mention is that when you are going through the laboratory form and uh, you're answering the questions, and at any time you can save your progress for later. So you can go here in the file menu and download uh, the form as an IPython notebook. And then a file gets downloaded and at later time, if you wanna complete, uh, the lab, you go to the colab.research.google site and in there you go to upload and you upload the file that you just downloaded and then it will take you to the exact same uh, report that you were completing and you can continue working on it and completing the report. Uh, one thing to be careful about is that when you return to the, to, uh, to the form, you should run this cell again, installing dependencies. You should install the dependencies first and then you can start completing the lab report again if you return it. And when you're done finishing, uh, finishing the report and you want to send it to me, you do this the exact same thing. You go here and download it as an IPython notebook file and it, you send it to me. Don't download it as a uh, Python file, download it as an IPython notebook. Uh, that's, that's it. Good luck.